Good evening, good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Come on in the room, come on in the room. Come on in the room, let us bless the Lord. Come on in the room, come on in the room, let us bless the Lord. Let's get into his presence tonight. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on, let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in his presence tonight? Anybody glad to be amongst the living? Anybody glad to tell the Lord thank you that he has kept you all week long? I know it's only Wednesday, but we still are glad to be in his presence. Come on. Come on. Let's begin to just lift him up right where you are. Come on. Let's begin to just pour out some praises on him. Let's begin to say thank you. Anybody glad? That they rose today? Anybody glad that he kept them all day long? Anybody thankful right now? Come on, let's just begin to worship him. Let's begin to lift him up. Let's just begin to inhale his sweet aroma. Come on, let's just begin to bestow upon him some praise and some thanksgiving. Come on, let's just begin to let him know how much we honor and adore him. How much we appreciate him. Hallelujah. He's done it again. He's done it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, D.I.T. Rose. Hey, D.I.T. Wilburn. Hey, Mother Anita. Sister Andrea. Come on, Sister Cassandra. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm grateful tonight. He's kept me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing something special. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And I don't know about you, but I want to tell the Lord, thank you. Hey, sister Tamia, I want to tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. I want to tell the Lord, thank you tonight. Hallelujah. He's mending. He's healing. He's doing some great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Come on. We ought to be in a, a posture of thankfulness, a posture of gratitude, a posture of humility. Come on. We ought to come on. We ought to be lifting him up right now, honoring him glorifying him because what it, what does the bible tells us it says he draws near those who draw near him come on hallelujah come on you got to draw near him tonight we got to glorify him tonight hallelujah hallelujah this is this isn't this isn't about us asking for anything in this moment, but this is about just glorifying him. Hallelujah. Just for a few moments, we just want to get into his presence and let him know that we appreciate him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's in the maintaining business. He's in the sustaining business. He's in the provision business. Hallelujah. He's in the healing business. He's a keeper. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Some of us ain't feeling our best, but we're doing our best in spite of. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We, not, we may not look as good as we want to look, but we still look good. Hallelujah. 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 I'm grateful today. I'm grateful because grace and mercy is still to my left and, and on my right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want to let God know I am grateful. Hallelujah. 
I just want to let them know I am grateful tonight. If I, if I don't say nothing else, hallelujah, I'm saying, Lord, I'm grateful. And I just want to let you know I'm grateful tonight. I'm saying thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to say thank you to you tonight. I'm going to lift my hands and say thank you, God. Hallelujah. I may not have as much money as I want to have, but I got some. Thank you, Lord. I may not have my dream job, but I got a job. Thank you. <laughs> I may not have the dream house, but I got one. Thank you. Hallelujah. I may not have my dream car, but I got a car. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I might not have the best life, but I have life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I'm thankful today. I'm just thankful today. I'm thankful today. Hallelujah. For whatever it is I'm thankful for. It's mine. It's mine, and you did it just for me. It's mine, and I'm grateful to you because you gave it to me. It's mine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm availing myself to you so that you can continue to give me what it is that you desire for me to have. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. You ought to be thankful. Come on. Just... Just tell whatever it is, whatever it is, Lord, I'm thankful for it. Whatever it is, I'm thankful. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm thankful. And you can have all of me. <laughs> you can have all of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you can have all of me. Thank you, Lord. You can have all of me. Come on, tell them. You can have all of me. You can have all of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. I tell you, spending time with Amos has changed my perspective. <laughs> there's a shift that's going on inside of me. There's a shift that is happening in my life. I pray that that over the past few weeks, as we as the Lord has been preparing us for stuff, has pre been preparing us for Him, that there has been a shift in your life. That there has been a shift in your attitude. That there has been a shift in your thinking. That there has been a shift in your conversation. That there has been a shift in your walk. That there has been a shift in you. That there's been a shift in your view. That there has been a shift in your vision. Because God is exposing some things right now. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm telling you, there. God is exposing some things. If, if I'm, to, I would I, I, in my in my prayer time, even this morning, I said in 2020, God is exposing some things. Oh my God! And He's doing it big. He's a, He's doing it big. He He is doing it big. Do you hear me? He's exposing some things, and He's doing it big. He's pulling back the covers. He's pulling it back. He is tearing walls down. He's tearing down systems. He's tearing down. He is opening it wide open so that we're able to see it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I am grateful. Things have been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And, 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 and we've been talking about it. Our ancestors, our forefathers have been talking about it. And, and people been walking around talking about, I don't see it. <laughs> people been walking around talking about, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not going on. 
but God is exposing it because he's given us the technology. He has inspired a technology. So now you can't say you don't see it. <laughs> oh yeah. He has inspired technology. So now you can't say you don't see it. Who am I talking to? <laughs> no more denial. No more lies. He's exposing it big. He's exposing it big. He's exposing it big. No more can you hide behind your palaces. No more can you hide in, in, in behind your money. No more can you hide behind your your big corporations. No more can you hide and say this isn't happening because he's exposing it. That's right, because he's sending ordinary people to do some extraordinary things in this hour. Why is he doing it? Because God said, my judgment is upon you. How do I know it's right here in the book of Amos? We study in the book of Amos. We study in the book of Amos. And if this is your first time tuning in, I want to say welcome to the rivers of life. My name is Pastor Queenie. I'm the senior pastor here at Rivers of Life. And we are studying the book of Amos. Get your Bible, get your pen and your paper, and come take a walk in the Word with us. This is our last Bible study before we go on our summer break. An exposure is happening. A full exposure is happening. I, on Sunday, opened us up to this word on Sunday, and tonight we are pulling back the cover of the tent and exposing all, 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 all of the skeleton that is holding up the tent so that you can see everything. So we thank you for tuning in tonight. And we're so excited that you're here with us. If this is your first time joining us, we want you to just type in the word guest. Type in the word guest in the chat because we have a gift for you. If this is your first time tuning in, all you got to do is type in the word guest in the chat. And you will get a gift from us and our flow bot, that's our automation, is going to send you a message. All we ask is that you simply respond by clicking yes or no. And if you click no, we will not be offended. It's all right. It's all right. You can always connect with us later. We would like to stay connected with you. But if you choose not to, it is well. It is well. Amen. It is well. It is well. But we're going to get into tonight's lesson. Because God is doing a full on exposure. What do I mean by that? He is exposing all of our sins. And I, I'm saying our because this is, a, um, this is full on exposure of all of our sins. Not just their sins. He's exposing all of our sins. All of our sins. He has sent an ordinary person to do something extraordinary. He has sent Amos, an ordinary person, to give his word. To pronounce a word of judgment over the six cities. And he is also speaking to the tribes of Judah and Israel, exposing their sins too. Because he says nobody is exempt. This is why I say he's exposing our sins. Because he's not just talking to them. He's talking to all of us. All of us. Because all of us got some sin. All of us got some residue that does not resonate in agreement with the will, plan, and purpose that God has for our lives. All of us have something that's just not right. 
It ain't right. It ain't right. And God is not happy. God is not happy. God is not happy. He's not pleased. He is not pleased. And here in this last Bible study, before we go on summer break, we're going to expose it. We're going to spend a little bit of time with it. Because he said, the Lord said, the Lord said, I'm going to judge you. <laughs> the Lord said, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge you. Not me, Pastor Queenie. Not any of the attendees here. The Lord said, I am going to judge you. I'm going to tell you what your sin is. I'm going to tell you what it is. That means I'm going to expose you to it. <laughs> so that you can see what it is. I'm going to tell you what the judgment is. Because it doesn't matter whether you did it five minutes ago, five years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, or 400 years ago. You're still going to be judged for it. So as they say, you know, what goes around comes around. We have all of these um, colloquialisms. Karma, it comes back to you. You know how people say all of this stuff. God says, I am going to judge you. Because I am not pleased. I am not happy. You are not acting according to how I have created you. You're not acting according to the image in which I created you. You're acting arrogant. You're acting stubbornly. You're acting not like me. All right? I want to give you some ordinary terms. I want to give you some ordinary terms and I want to explain it to you in a way that you can see it in real life. Amen? Because we keep asking ourselves, why does this thing keep happening? Why does this thing keep happening? Over and over and over again. It just keeps happening. It keeps happening. For 400 years, this thing just keeps happening. I can't understand it. Why does this keep happening? And what has made a difference here in 2020 that now a difference is happening? What, why now in 2020 is things changing and shifting and, and, and a, something has caused um, something new to happen now that did not happen 20 years ago? 50 years ago, 100 years ago, or, or 400 years ago. And as I said to you in the beginning, technology is one of the biggest things. God inspired technology. What is that technology? The cell phone. We love the cell phone. We love the cell phone. Everybody have cell phones. And we love taking our cell phones with us. Because one of the things we like to do with the cell phone is use the camera. We like taking selfies. And we like to take videos. So because we like to take cell phones and we like to take videos, we have a tendency to take selfies and we videotape stuff as it happens. Right? Y'all with me? Say yes if y'all like to take take videos and document stuff as it happens. Say me, just say me if this is you that you like to document stuff as it's happening. Just put me in the chat if that's you. You like to document stuff as it's happening. You know, you go somewhere, you want to take pictures, you want to take videos so that you have uh uh uh, uh a memory. You know, when you go on vacation, you know, you out and about on town or whatever. You know, you got things going on. You just want to have a little memory of what's going on. You know, you riding in the car, whatever. 
something interesting happened at the grocery store, you want to document. Just put me in the chat if that's you. Just put me in the chat if that's you that like to take video of what's going on. Is that you? Just put me in there if that's you. Just put me. I'm going to give y'all a minute to catch up and I'm going to give you some more. Just put me in the chat if that's you. If, if I just got one person, it's all right. Oh, nobody, nobody. Oh, we that oh, we that far. Oh, it's that that delay. Where well, that delay is something here with Facebook. Who that delay? All right, all right. I'm gonna give y'all a few more seconds because y'all gotta catch up a little bit with me here. But just, just uh, just, I'm gonna give y'all a second to to put that me in there. Put that me in there. Put that me in there. If it's you that like to, you know, show the video, capture the video to document yourself as you're going places and, and, and you're doing stuff in life, you want to have that video. <laughs> you got, um, Oh, okay. All right. Oh, okay. We plugged it over there. Okay, I got it. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, I got my first meet, so I'm going to go on. Okay. All right. So. All right. <laughs> so, because of this technology, this has allowed us to keep abreast of what's going on. Not just here with us locally, but all over the country. Now, I, I, I'm a, I'm a trying. I'm trying to keep up and and also account for the delays. So y'all forgive me. Now, also, with the young man who was um, unfortunately um, murdered in the Wendy's parking lot, it's still frozen, it caught up, it keeps freezing. I'm so sorry. Okay, so the young man who was murdered in Atlanta, unfortunately, Wendy's ended up getting burned down. So, how many of y'all know that a white woman set the fire? Did y'all know that? <laughs> oh, boy. If I hadn't seen the video for myself, we're all led to believe it was one of us. Isn't that something? Who would have thought? Hmm. Who would have thought? Because when they tell a story, they just tell a story so nonchalantly. Oh, he was murdered. And then the protesters, and they show all of us. And then they say, so graciously, that the Wendy's was burnt down. But they neglected to tell that part. <laughs> but thanks to technology, this captured it. Aren't we grateful? Aren't we grateful for the full exposure? For the full exposure so that we can know the truth. 
Aren't we grateful? Aren't you glad the Lord sent angels a judge so we'll know the truth? You know why he said that the, the truth will set you free? <laughs> you know why he, he, he had to send he had to send it. He had to send a man with his word to expose them to the truth. You know why he had to send them? Send the man to expose them to their truth and us to our truth. He had to send somebody to expose us to our truth because we don't want to see our truth. We don't want to own our truth. We don't. We don't. And God says, I'm tired of you lying to yourselves. I'm tired of you lying to yourself. I'm tired of you walking around as if you haven't done anything wrong. I'm tired of you trying to act like it's not me. We walk around with this attitude like it's not me. It's always somebody else. It's not me. That's why I share with you on Sunday. We have to do some hard work. We have to avail ourselves to the Lord to do some hard work. We've got to do some hard work. Everybody has to do some hard work. Them and us. Because we got to deal with us. We got to ask ourselves some difficult questions. gotta do some hard work. We gotta deal with us. Because the, the, the fight that's going on, this fight that's going on is killing us. It is killing us. And specifically tonight, I want to look at Amos chapter 1. And I want to look at verse 11. And it says, this is what the Lord says, for, for three sins of Edom, even for four, I will not relent. Because he pursued his brother with a sword and slaughtered the women of the land because his anger raged continually and his fury flamed unchecked. That right there is the is the heart of the matter. Because his anger raged continually and his fury flamed unchecked. That right there gets to the heart of the problem. I'm glad y'all, I'm glad y'all seen the video. I see y'all comments coming in a little later. I'm glad y'all seen, I'm glad y'all seen the video. Okay. Yep. But th this is, this is really where I want to, to focus the heart of tonight's lesson. Right there in Amos chapter one, verse 11. That's where I want to center tonight's lesson. Amos chapter one, verse 11. And I want to really focus on anger and rage, fury and flame, unchecked, that continual rage and that fury, flame and unchecked. I, I, I want I want to I want to really stay right there. Because it's very, very important that we understand what the issue was and why it lingered so. And why this right here is how we got to where we are today. Esau and Jacob they were fighting from the womb. If you read, 
if you read the scripture, they they wrestled inside their mother's womb. They were kicking and fighting inside the mother womb. They rumbled and tumbled inside the mother womb. Even when it was time to give birth, they were wrestling, trying to come out. Who would be born first? Who would be born first? And the and the Lord spoke a word on who would be born first and who would even be entitled to the birthright. And although one brother, they were uh one brother, uh foot came out first and they tied the string on him. The other brother was born first. But he was not entitled to the birthright. The Lord had already assigned who would get it. And even through the Bible, it said that he stole the birthright. He didn't. It was already assigned. Read the story. But they fought the whole time. They fought the whole time. These two brothers, Jacob and Esau, fought the whole time, their whole life. To the point that Jacob ran and lived on the other side of the country. The mother sent him away because she knew what the Lord had told her. And when Esau wanted to come and meet with him, Jacob didn't want to meet with him. Jacob said, "Uh uh-uh, he come to kill me. (laughs) He come to kill me. Why? Because anger and rage that continues, that rage is flamed. It's fan. And it goes unchecked. No conversations never had about it. We just go our separate ways and we never deal with it. To the point, what did Jacob do? When he knew his brother wanted to, to meet him, what did he do? Remember what he did? He took his family in the midnight hour. You remember the story? Took his family in the midnight hour. Took them to the other side. Put them safely away. He went back and he wrestled with the Lord all night long. He said, I, I'm, I refuse to let you go until you bless me. All because he didn't want to have an encounter with his brother. The Lord blessed him and he left with a limb. Because the Lord touched his socket. then when he finally has this encounter with his brother, his brother was not even mad. You remember the story? When he finally has this encounter with his brother, his brother's not even mad. Because his brother is now let it go. But Jacob was the one that was holding on to everything. His brother has now let it go. But this fury and this feud that was between the two of them has now inherently passed down to their family, to their younger generations that has come along. So now this anger and this fury has gone on unchecked with the family because these two have now not had conversations with the other generations to let them know. But the story has continued on. It's going on and on and on and on. And they have continued to share that story from generation to generation. And it's going out to other people in the community, so on and so forth. So now you got inherent information and you've got cultivated information. Information that's now being passed on in the community. 
Now you got people in the community now taking sides. Because I'm mm. down with Jacob. No, I'm down with Esau. <laughs> and it carries on. And, and, and people just have a tendency to take sides based off of which family they're associated with. What, what, what are you saying, Pastor? This is what we do. This is what we do as humans. Whichever side we on is the side we have a tendency to roll with. Whatever side that we're on is the side we have a tendency to flow with. Instead of standing up and being on the Lord's side and checking. When's the last time you checked somebody? When's the last time you stood up and said, uh-uh, that ain't right? When you heard somebody speak outside of character, when you heard somebody speak something that was uh, uh, in opposition to the word of God, when you heard somebody say something that what was misrepresenting the kingdom of God, when's the last time you checked somebody? Or do you just let people say what they want to say and tarry on conversations as if they, you're not in the room? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying not to call names. Because I've been watching some stuff and people are having conversations as if they're not in the room. I'm just asking a question. When the last time you checked somebody? God is doing a full-on exposure. He's exposing you. He's exposing you to the friends that are in your circle. He's exposing you to your, to your neighbors. He's exposing you to those that are in your circle. And will you stand up and check them? Because if you don't, then you're doing what it says right here in this scripture. Anger and rage continually. And his fury and flame unchecked. Because silence. Silence means you condone what's going on. Who am I talking to tonight? Y'all quiet. I don't see nothing going on over there in that chat. Am I stuck again? I'm, I'm froze again? Lord Jesus. I'm froze again. Because, listen. Let, let me tell y'all something. Everybody cannot be protesting. Everybody can't be out there. Somebody got to stay behind. Somebody has to make sure mama and them are all right. Somebody got to make sure the children's being taken care of. Somebody got to cook dinner and clean the house. Somebody <laughs> has to do something else. Everybody can't be out there in the streets protesting. Somebody has got to be over at the state house reading the policy. Somebody's, who am I talking to? Somebody has got to read the policy. Somebody has got to make sure that the policy is being changed. Somebody has got, everybody can't be on the street protesting. Somebody has got to be making sure something is happening. How do I, how do, listen, how do I know that? Because something is happening. God is moving because folks is getting checked. Aunt your mama's coming off the box. Have you heard? Have you heard? Aunt your mama's coming off the box. Have you heard? Have you heard? Some HBCUs is getting millions of dollars. Have you heard? Because everybody can't be out there protesting. Somebody's got to be in there having some conversations. Everybody can't be mad. Somebody got to do some talking. 
Somebody got to be at the table making a difference. Somebody's got to do something. Everybody can't be mad. Somebody got to check somebody and say, you've got to make a difference. You've got to do something. Because God is going to judge you. How do I know? He said it in the text. It says it right here in the text. If you look at verse number 12, it says, I will send fire on Timon that will consume the fortresses of Basra. That's what the text says. So we can't walk around like we don't know. We can't walk around like we ain't supposed to say something. We can't walk around like it ain't us. You can't walk around with your lips pinned. You can't walk around with your shades on like you can't see it. You can't walk around and sit in a room and allow conversations to go on. As if you're not in attendance. You need to check somebody. You need to check somebody. Remember. Everything. Is not all them. Some of it is us. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm just putting it out here and letting you know that if you don't do something, God will judge. And you may be looking at yourself saying, I'm just an ordinary person. It doesn't matter. God is looking for ordinary people to do some extraordinary thing. Because that's what Amos was. Ordinary person. But Amos was called to do something extraordinary. But we can't act like Edom. Nor can we act like Israel. Because Israel had more sin. If you go over to Amos chapter 2. And we start at verse number six. They had more sins that, that was called out. They had more sins. They, they, they were selling people for sandals, trampling on their heads, walking past people like they was dust on the ground, denying justice. They, 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 they was cutting a food, cutting a pure muck. And the Lord, he was not pleased. He was not pleased with them at all. No way, shape, or form. He said, and this is not going to continue. This is not going to continue. Because in Amos chapter 2, starting at verse number 13, he said, I will crush you as a cart crushes when loaded with grain. He said, and the swift will not escape. The strong will not muster their strength and the warrior will not save his life. The archer will not stand his ground. The fleet footed soldier will not get away and the horseman will not save his life. Even the bravest warriors will flee naked on that day. What is he telling us? Even the greatest of the great won't be able to stand against me. So this is why when I asked the question a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't understand why how come none of the prominent people weren't saying anything? 
Where's all the prominent people? Where's all of the, the, the great leaders? How come they're not saying nothing? Because they are no, no match against God. They're no match. <laughs> There's nothing that they can say. There's nothing that they can bring to the table in this hour. Because all of us, all of us, all of us, Got some repenting to do, but all of us have something to offer at the table. Because all of us can make a difference. All of us can make sure that a change comes. Why? Because we all got access to this. That's one thing. We all got access to the phone. So nobody can lie anymore and say, that's not happening. Yes, it is. And I have proof. Because what you used to lie and say, oh, they did it. It ain't us. No, we got proof that it's you. We got proof that it's you. We got this proof that it's you defaming the stores and saying that it's, it's us. We're out here peacefully protesting because we're tired. We, we out here, we really want to, we really want to change because we can't take this no more. We can't, we can't take this no more. We tired of knees in our neck. We tired of guns in our back. We tired of people running up in our home and killing us for no reason. And then getting away with murder. We're tired of it. And all those who are in agreement with that are rising up. And a change is going to come. Because everybody can't be out there in the front protesting. Somebody got to be in the back. Looking at that policy and saying this system must change. This system must change. And the only way that's going to happen is somebody got to come to the table and say, I'm going to check you. Because this cannot continue. I was watching a video of these two pastors having a conversation. And one of the pastors said, yeah, we're going to, you know, it, things about to change. We're about to, we're about to take back America. And the other pastor, on, pa pastor said to him, take back, take the, take back America, take America back where? Take us back to Jim Crow. Take America back to picking cotton. Take America back where? And when that happened, when he checked him, it made the other pastor think about his words and about where America was being taken back to. And because that pastor had the courage to stand up and check him, it made him rethink his position about where America was being taken back to. And now he regretted his position. He regretted his support. And he especially regrets it today. Forty-five signed a weak bill talking about uh, some, some police reform. I've seen governors do more police reform than what he did. I had a conversation today with my senior pastor in Florida and we were talking about how defunding the police is not the proper term for what needs to happen. Because we need policing. We just don't need over policing. We need a change. And the conversations that we need to have, we need to make sure that the policies are put in place so that our police are not overworked and they're not put in positions so that they're not policing in places that they shouldn't be in. 
They should not be policing social issues. Plain and simple. That's what we got social workers for. Shout out to all the social workers out there. They shouldn't be in those issues. And this is why we have to check somebody. We have to, we have to stand up. We have to speak out and we have to make sure that we're involved in the appropriate conversations so that we can make sure that the appropriate changes are made. This is just my two cents. You can agree or disagree, but this is my Bible study. And this is what I believe that the Lord is saying to me. This is what I hear coming up out of Amos. This is what I hear that you can't let it continue to go on unchecked. Because when we let it go unchecked, then we're not operating like God. Because we're not doing or acting in the image of God. God is about love. Because when you love your brother, then you would say something to your brother. Because, listen, the God that we serve, he said, I love you enough to chastise you. I love you enough to whoop you. That's what the Bible says. He's a father that loves us enough that he will whoop us. Why? Because you're out of line. You're out of order. That's the kind of father it is that we serve. He loves us that much. He said, I love you enough that I'm going to correct you. His, his judgment, it, 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 it's not a punishment, but it's, a, it's correction. This is correction. In order for us to be better, he got to correct us for our wrongness. We can't continue to walk down the wrong way, down the street the wrong way. We can't continue to, 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 to walk through life in error. We can't continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. God said, no, no, I cannot allow that to continue to happen. So I'm going to check you. I'm going to correct you. I have to do this because this is for the good of those who love the Lord. So if you love him, you receive his rebuke in love. You receive his correction in love. You receive his chastisement in love. So when I say this is my Bible study, this is what I hear the Lord saying, saying to me. I, I, I'm saying that in love, not in arrogance. Because this is, this is what I hear the Lord saying to me. Because guess what? He corrected me too. Because I hurt. My thoughts have not always been in alignment with what the Lord is saying. Because when, when they said when they said Wendy's ablaze, let me tell you, I thought I thought about that contribution that Wendy's made to the to, to 45's campaign. I was like, oh, have at it. <laughs> then I had I had to repent because my thoughts were not right. Let's be real. Can we be transparent? Can we be transparent? Can we be transparent? And not hold it against one another? Can y'all not hold it against the system? Let's be real. The truth of the matter. The truth of the matter. 
Then when I came to myself, and I said, well, what did Wendy's have to do with it? <laughs> That's the, when I came to myself, I said, what did Wendy's have to do with the murder? Wendy's, she ain't did nothing to the boy. It, it just all happened to ha happen at that location. Wendy's didn't have nothing to do with it. I said, now we're acting like Edom. We're just pursuing. That's anger unchecked. We acting outside of the character of God. We done burned down the place. They ain't had nothing to do with it. Then when I seen the video, I said, oh, 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 Jesus. Look at there, look at there, look at that. The plot thickens. Look at the evil one. Look at the evil one. Just trying to make us even look bad. My God, my God, my God. share this with you. Let me share this with you. He's exposing us. He's pulling back the curtain. He's tearing down the wall. Because he wants us to put aside our differences. He wants us to repent for our wrongdoing. No matter what side of the coin you sit on. Because all of us have something that we have ever done. Whether it's in thought or in deed. all have not acted as God would like us to. I want you to understand we all have not acted as God would have liked us to. And that's the part we have to repent for. But he's exposing us all. So that progress can be made. Because he said, I'm going to give it back to them. Everybody that has been wrong, I'm going to give it back to them. It's been 400 years. I'm giving it back. You're not going to continue to oppress them any longer. I'm giving it back. You're not going to continue to hold them down. Oh, I'm giving it back. You're not going to continue to put a knee on their neck and think that you're going to give it away with it. Oh, I'm giving it back. You're not going to continue to lie on them and walk around like you can't see what's happening. Oh, I'm giving it back. Because everything that the devil has stolen, I'm giving it back. So now it's up to you what you want to do. Because now... We are in the most momentous moment of all times. Because dollar has value. The dollar has value. That black dollar has value. What you gonna do with your dollar? Sure that we're getting it back. But when you get it back, what you gonna do with it? Are you gonna give it right back to them? Are you going to give it right back to them? Because they, they marked it up because they didn't want us to have it in the first place. They priced us out of the market because they didn't want us to have it in the first place. So once you get it back, what you going to do with it? 
That's my question for you tonight. He's exposed it. He's tearing it down. He's giving it back to us. But what you going to do with it once you get it? Are you going to give it right back to them? Or are you going to take it and invest it and build it up? The black community. So that the black dollar stays in the black community. So that the black dollar builds the black community. So that the black dollar has a stronger black community going forward. What you going to do with it when you get it? That's my question for you tonight. What you going to do with it when you get it? That's the question. Because a change is coming. Don't let nothing go unchecked. But when you get the check, what you going to do with it? I pray that you have enjoyed this. This is our last Bible study for our summer break we will resume in September the middle of September when the children go back to school I pray that you have a safe and prosperous summer but I also pray that you think about it think about it what you gonna do when you get it what you gonna do when you get it that's where I want to leave you going into the summer what you gonna do when you get it what you going to do when you get it? All right. Just want to leave you right there. Let that sit with you. Go in peace. Go in love. Go in the grace of God. Go in the image of God. And don't turn from it. In Jesus' name it is that I seal this prayer. God bless you all.